Ah, right above you, Papa. Wow. The ruthless Chinese warmonger and historian who specializes in medieval warfare. So why would Vlad actually do this? Kink. It's a kink. Well, let's put it up his butthole and find out. They created this 500 BC. Think about that. What would happen if you pit Sun Tzu against Vlad the Impaler? Oh, you remember Vlad? The guy who used to put human heads on stakes? Diabolical. Or Sun Tzu? Military man, strategist, philosopher. He wrote the art of war. Well, the 2000s show the deadliest warrior attempted to answer that question. Let's get into it. Vlad the Impaler, the medieval Romanian prince whose insatiable thirst for blood inspired the legend of Dracula. Shout out to Dracula. The ruthless Chinese warmonger whose revolutionary art of war led to the massacre of millions. I had no idea. I thought he was just like a, a pleasant author. You'll see what happens when the two warriors go toe to toe. No rules, no safety, no mercy. It's a duel to the death to decide who is deadliest warrior. We've gathered martial arts experts, scientists, doctors, and a weapons arsenal for the ages. It's all here to create a battle between two of history's most legendary warriors, Vlad the Impaler. That mustache? Freddie Mercury. Europe's 15th century prince of darkness. Oh. He was a solid 5'9", okay. Very tall for that era, I would say. And the blood-soaked inspiration behind the world's most infamous vampire. Versus Sun Tzu, the Chinese military mastermind. 5'7", Chinese fella from before Christ. Tall. Whose 2,500-year-old combat strategies redefined warfare. Biomedical engineer Jeff D. Malin will test these two notorious leaders' most lethal weapons. I love Sun Tzu. He's one of the greatest military strategists. I say it every episode, Dane Cook. And his theories are still in use today. Vlad, on the other hand, can lead from the front. I see him as both a CEO and an operator. We have Vlad the Impaler, who's a cold-blooded killer. You can't get more brutal than this guy. Then you have the philosopher, Sun Tzu, the guy who's written the book on how to win in a war. Hey, listen, he's a theorist. You're putting a theorist in there with a straight-up serial killer. It's going to be a very interesting battle. Computer whiz Max Geiger will enter the test results into a simulation. His last name is literally Geiger, like the Geiger counter. Any relation? Our two warriors will meet in the sim and fight to the death to tell us who is the deadliest warrior. These men of war once led vast armies, but our simulator will calculate the results of a one-on-one -on -one battle. The winner will be the deadliest warrior. Fighting for Vlad the Impaler. Vaslav Havlik. Of course. Fighting for Dracula is a guy who looks identical to, you guessed it, Dracula. An historian who specializes in medieval warfare. Vlad had no remorse. He killed without any hesitation. He chose the most cruel ways to kill. Also wielding Vlad the Impaler's arsenal, Bram Gallagher. A swordmaster and bladed weapon specialist. Vlad's ferocious. The men simply turned around and fled home with their tails between their legs. Take it easy, dude. You know this is a show, right? You can see the burning fire in his eyes. Vlad III was born to a nobleman known as Dracul, the ruler of Wallachia, a region just south of Transylvania. And that's where the name came from. Dracula, or Draculia as it's pronounced, means son of the dragon, or in Romanian, son of the devil. To retain his throne, Vlad's father allowed his 13-year-old son to be held hostage by the Ottoman Empire. During his captivity, Vlad was whipped and witnessed daily executions. He vowed one day to exact revenge on his captors. All right, so we solved the whole situation. The reason he was such a crazy, malevolent killer is because he had daddy issues. He was abandoned by his father, and in return, he killed a lot of humans. He dined within the corpses, dipping the bread in the blood of impaled victims. Drop it in the comment, did this really happen, or is this one of these sensationalized moments for the show? Did he really dine on the blood of these people? When Sun Tzu meets Vlad, Vlad may disembowel him, and ultimately he's gonna shove a stick up his ass. <laughs> Yo! Now Sun Tzu experts believe Vlad will be the one beaten in battle. Fighting for Sun Tzu, Liu Kang! That was a low hanging fruit. But similar name, Johnny Yen. 
six-time Wushu Grand Champion and Sun Tzu Tactician. Fear eventually will turn back around and bite you in the ass. Respect, however, will last you a lifetime. Also fighting for Sun Tzu, Kung Fu Swordsman, Tommy Lang, master of Sun Tzu's martial arts techniques and weapons. Sun Tzu's gonna wear Vlad out by basically making Vlad move the way he wants him to move. Vlad is a lunatic. Sun Tzu would take him down anytime, any day. Master Sun Tzu was born into a family who specialized in weapons and warfare. While little is known about the man himself, in 500 BC, his strategic genius made the... Oh, sh that's where the Wu-Tang Clan is from. Defeating armies seven times in size. Sun Tzu's book, The Art of War, was written in the blood of his enemies and has become the Bible on battle tactics and conquest strategy. Famous military generals, from Napoleon Bonaparte to Norman Schwarzkopf, have implemented Sun Tzu's strategies when waging their wars. So how would this master strategist match up against the real Prince of Darkness? Well, before we even get into the weapons, I gotta say, strategies are all fine and dandy when you have squad versus squad but let me tell you something we have two men going head to head and one guy's looking to put your butthole on top of his sword i'm giving my initial edge to sun tzu the art of war has been one of the definitive guides on how to fight lead and conquer for over 2,000 years but can he fight is my question without a doubt strategy almost always wins but in this case i gotta go with vlad because he has better technology and he's a dynamite mustache force Vlad's favorite form of execution was impalement. That's it, huh? What's your butthole on this? Drive starting in the posterior region and driving yeah. this up through a person's body. That's the rectum. That guy creeps me out. So why would Vlad actually do this? Kink. It's a kink. To impose fear in his enemies when they oh, saw yeah, fear. Never mind. Forest of impaled corpses. They run away screaming. So this guy's alive while this is all going on. Yeah, the whole point was for the shaft to basically ride along the side of the spine so the man stays upright. So we're gonna see what kind of damage this would actually do to the human body. Hold it down tight. Well, let's now. put it up his butthole and find out. Uh, there you go, out. right up his butthole. Pretty sure this is illegal in a couple of different states. <laughs> Almost two feet in. All right, yo, let's yo, yo. The, the two Asian gentlemen are like, I think this is worthy of our attention. Do its work. There His legs go. coming Slowly. off. There's oh no. Oh, oh, the butthole. Oh, man. Sort of like the grotesque life size trophy that Vlad would keep and show to everybody coming near his kingdom. Bro, calm down, bro. You paint your nails. You, you just, you're all over the place, bro. Once it goes through the diaphragm and hits the lung, it's tearing apart all the great vessels, and the person basically bleeds to death. The whole point of impalement was to instill that sort of fear in the warriors attacking Vlad and his troops. The killage. A custom-made blade for mutilation and murder. Shit, man. You got a lot of things going on in this weapon. And it can go pretty much through anything. Even the butthole. Everything. Everything with Vlad is about the anal rectum situation. Vaslav will demonstrate the sharpness of the steel. You ready? Ready. Three, two. Calm down, one. dude. Oh, my lord. I think this is the first sword that can rival the katana. <laughs> this you. is, I mean, I'm in disbelief. I have never seen anything just cut through a pig that easily multiple times. This is the 2000s, guys. This is the 2000s. Now, why don't we have television like this anymore? He just completely destroyed an entire pig and everyone's excited about it. You tell me which is more important, impelling or a book that revolutionized modern warfare and still does it today. Definitely the impaling if we're talking about fighting each other. I don't know. Yeah, hey, listen, early poll. Drop it in the comments. Who do you think is going to win? Vlad the Impaler leads his assault with a killage sword, halberd, steel Ooh. crossbow, and hand cannon. Okay, we got the halberd, the steel crossbow, and the hand cannon. Sun Tzu attacks with the Xi'an sword, the Zwa, repeating crossbow, and flaming arrows. That's dope. Especially the flaming arrows. Dig it. Sun Tzu is ready to cross swords with his own legendary blade. The Xi'an. A quick I don't strike know, sword. Dog. I ready don't know. to do some impaling of its own. That last thing that the fucking impaler guy had was way more impressive looking. This is the Tian, also known as the gentleman sword or the scholar sword. And is there a particular reason this is a gentleman slash scholar sword? Because it's meant to just nick the skin. No deep cuts here, just a nick, sir. It's really light to carry around. Scholars can walk around with it all day and not feel fatigued or have to carry a cumbersome weapon. It's not too heavy. I can use it as a walking stick. Come on, man. Lightning fast, good for deflection. No chance Excellent in winning this round. 
But can Sun Tzu's sword match the brute strength of Vlad's annihilating killage? Johnny, ready? Nice work, man. I think the difference between this sword and the killage, if this tip was weighted, you would have went right through the pig, just what you saw the killage do. And Pallor's like, but I cut it in half, whole body in half, through the bones, bro, through the bones. To settle the debate, our team reviews the high-speed footage from each test. Okay, I love the design of this sword. But as you can see, it went right through. It Nick the skin, smooth. dog. Quick Nick recovery it. time. Oh, it doesn't really matter. For short range weapons, the edge goes to Vlad's killage. There you go. While Sun Tzu was busy contemplating battle strategies, Vlad the Impaler was out in the fields. There's no contest. Vlad was a warrior who led his people to victory. The Romanian prince backed up his frontal assaults by setting masterful ambushes with a powerful weapon. The hand cannon. A mean piece of hardware that marked the beginning of modern warfare. Wow. Is this one of the first projectile type gun situations? This is one of the first portable firearms introduced into the battlefield. Answer my this question. Baby fires a half inch iron ball with a black powder charge. There's nothing to it. All you have to do is prime it, charge it, you light a match here, and all you're doing is looking straight down the barrel. You can point this wherever you want. And leave a like. The best in the world. Your shot's gonna go wherever you need, right down the line. To test the killing power of the cannon, our team sets up three mannequins to represent Sun Tzu's soldiers. That's great. They put little, like, kimonos on the mannequins. It's really just kind of female blouses. And they tried to make them look Asian, but they just look like Caucasian men with Asian facial hair. This is incredible. Look at their legs. Nasty blast. 30 seconds. But it takes well over a minute to reload a second shot. Mad slow, bro. Mad slow. Look at the Asian cats. Like, this shit is some fugazi. Yeah! Right through the heart. All right, that's pretty bad. You know, I love this weapon. This is as perfect a placement you can get when you want to shoot somebody. It's directly <laughs> right into the heart. It did take him a while to load up the gun. But That's a still. long time to take all those shots, man. I Especially mean, on the I battlefield. Killed hundreds of your guys in the same amount of time. If you die instantly, it's not really a problem, is it? This thing has added weaponry. The warring spike on the end and the weight of it. I got a weapon that's going to take out hundreds of your guys in a fraction of the time. Ah, uh, you wish. Oh! This guy, man. Oh, again. The producer said, do this after they walk away so that you seem unhinged. And he said, okay. Flaming arrows. The only concern I have right off the bat is the penetration barrier is about an inch, inch and a half. So it's going to be basically all about the burn, not really about the penetration. Sun Tzu was a master of deception. His favorite tactic was to cover the dry brush with sesame oil. And as soon as the enemy entered where he wanted them to, lights everything up. Our team is prepared a field the same way Sun Tzu would have set up his ambush. Ah, oh, you can't compete with this. This guy is setting everyone on fire. Yeah. Wow. He didn't even have to hit the mannequins. There's a pig roasting in there. They threw a pig in for good measure. That's incredible. This pig did not ignite like I thought it was going to. I think he could have rolled out of this. Hundreds of yards of this all on fire. Guys in the middle, they're not getting out of this anytime soon, guys. What we do need to see is can it kill one on one? To test the arrow's effectiveness in a head to head battle, a pig carcass wearing the same plated chainmail as Vlad the Impaler. That little point is not going to go through that chain link, whatever situation. No way. Three, two, not going to happen. One, fire! Ugh. I'm telling you, that's that BC technology, bro. Ooh, that one went in there a little bit. Nice job, man. But I have to admit, Vlad's plated chainmail here, if it did hit the plate, bounce right off and extinguish the arrow. But if you hit just the chainmail, boom, right through. But I'm not too sure if this is a kill shot. Yeah, let's take a closer look. If you actually see the penetration from here, you see that it's basically coming to the hilt of the packing here. You see it's about an inch and a half. Why don't we right, lift up? Yeah, yeah let's get this up and see if there's a burn. But you gotta admit, that's an impressive shot to go through chainmail. It's not trying to give yourself credit, man. He's trying to like skew the judges. You gotta admit it's pretty good, huh? How oh, it kind of went through the chain link fence, huh? And what that's doing is actually cauterizing. So you're gonna decrease the amount of bleeding because the tip is so hot. 
You're looking at a flesh wound. Do you forget what happens when gunpowder comes into play? We ambush you with the cannon. We'll just wait for you to walk in, and then it's over. We're just using one of Sun Tzu's strategies. And thank you for giving it to us. <laughs> I'm sorry to say it, man, but Sun Tzu's getting his ass kicked this episode. The hand cannon just gives you way too many options. It's the most accurate black powder weapon we've seen on this show. Plus, it backs it all up with a war spike and a bloody club. Edge hand cannon. In special weapons, the edge goes to Vlad's hand cannon. That's two versus one so far. Vlad the Impaler is up 2-0. But armies have always needed something that dealt death from a distance. The repeating crossbow. Impressive. A rapid fire launch pad for deadly bolts. They created this 500 BC. Think about that. This is basically your modern day machine gun, but created 2,000 years ago. What kind of bolts are you guys slinging? Here I got your basic wood. Pencil? That's a school pencil. Okay, nice. Iron tipped each poison with wolfsbane. Wolfsbane is a poison distilled from the roots of aconitum, a flowering plant that grows wild in China and is known for its extreme toxicity. Vlad didn't need to rely on poison to take his enemies out. His weapon of choice, the steel crossbow. A murderous mechanical monster. Very similar weapons. You aim, fire, they're dead. So what kind of range are we talking about? Talking about 150 yards, easy. So how long does it take to reload then? They reload about 15 to 20 seconds. <laughs> which is much slower than that one, but on the other hand, by the time they get close, they're dead. Maybe, or you miss, and then you gotta reload for half a century. Our experts will fire at multiple targets, one of them armored. Three, two, The stance is legendary. Look at him, look at him. Time! Let's go take a look. Pretty we impressive. Rounds off in 30 seconds. How many do we have hit? Seven hits on three targets. This is a great shot, but the key here is gonna be the depth of penetration. Ooh. Ooh. You're about two inches in. This is a near kill shot. This would definitely cause significant amount of bleeding. Every one of these arrows is poison tipped. At that point, you're getting a high volume of that drug right into the heart. So because of that, that one is almost a guaranteed kill. It's still only two kills and one maybe, and two guys aren't even touched. Buslav will fire Vlad's steel crossbow at identical targets, but with one now wearing Sun Tzu's leather armor. Fire! Uh. Whoa, there we go. All right. Two minutes later. Time! So the location is definitely perfect, and actually the depth of penetration is seems like it's pretty adequate. We're getting almost three inches here. It's looking like there's very little damage. The leather is like, get off me. Anatomically, it's a great location to kill, but that's why we have armor right in this spot. So who has the better long-range weapon? The steel crossbow appears powerful, but with its slow reload time, it's not going to be able to take out someone before the repeater crossbow gets in close enough to unleash a devastating volley of bolts. Because of that, I'm giving my edge to the repeater crossbow. All right, all right. Finally, they give Sun Tzu some credit. Let's get him on the boards. Two to one, baby. Oh man, a little tiny hand at the end of a stick. Wild. A six foot pole with iron claws sharp enough to tear a man's face off. Looking at the design of these claws, actually I think this would be very good at grabbing something, like even a shield, something like that. Yeah. Yo. This is a kill. <laughs> Half of the heads off, but more importantly, you actually fractured all the bones through the face. It's called a Lefort fracture. I mean, the key with this type of a strike is you depress the bones into the skull. That thing is basically killing with the first strike. It's a hell of a high five. He had to throw that joke in there. Couldn't help himself. High five. I just took a guy's head off right there. The Halbed. A triple threat arsenal with a spear, axe, and hook. Pretty beautiful. All in one. This is the halberd. To test the three striking surfaces of the halberd, the team serves up a side of beef. Brown, are you ready? Yeah! What the fuck is going on?
This is taking limbs off. Look at this. This is going straight through the head of the femur. This is three inches of bone. This is going to kill the person in seconds. Yeah, but keep in mind, my friend, that he didn't use the halberd on a head. I think if he would have, that head would have been taken clean off with the first strike. See how deep in the bone he went? Skull is nothing. You were dead before this even got through your soft underbelly, boy. In mid-range weapons, Vlad the Impaler takes the edge with the halberd. The halberd. The testing is complete. Before we determine which warrior will control the battlefield, we must consider one final thing. An X Factor. Vlad was basically raised on betrayal, and his only way how to establish himself was to be crueler than the rest of the world around him. Sun Tzu's X Factor was his ability to exploit an enemy's emotions. Sun Tzu said if your opponent is of choleric temper, seek to irritate him. He would do everything he could to piss off Vlad and use that against him. The angrier he got, the more mistakes he would make and the more weaknesses Sun Tzu would exploit. He would rush right in, be destroyed. The X Factor for me goes to Sun Tzu. He wrote the book, literally. If that's not an X Factor, I don't know what is. Well, there's no getting around the fact that Sun Tzu was one of the fathers of military strategy and was a brilliant thinker. <laughs> Vlad the Impaler was a tyrant. He was ruthless and he had the battlefield experience to seal the deal. Experience has to count for something. You could write about it all you want, but unless you've been in there, he's gonna get overwhelmed by the, the sheer intensity that Vlad brings. That's my feeling. Last chance to vote. Who's it gonna be, Vlad or Sun Tzu? Now, it's time to find out who is that deadliest warrior. Max will simulate 1,000 battles using a computer program. There's only one thing left to do. Let's fire this sucker up and see who is the deadliest warrior. All right, baby, let's go. Look at Vlad with the stash. My man's making some tea, laying low, contemplating. But is he ready for that intensity? Oh, that whack ass thing. Oh, hell no. That was my DeJerling tea. Got him. Ah, right above you, Papa. Wow. Ooh. That's got to be an artery. He's going to bleed out, man. You better get some compression on that leg, buddy. Oh, it's a, it's a rude. It's not really him. Strategy. He's always thinking at Sun Tzu. Hit him with that big ass hand, man. It's a mere flesh wound. Watch out, there's a trap. He's gonna. Oh no. He had to do it to him right up Sun Tzu's poop hole. Vlad. Vlad. Wow. After a thousand battles, Vlad the Impaler triumphed over Sun Tzu with 652 kills. Sun Tzu's 348. Decisive weapons were actually the close-in weapons. Vlad's halberd was able to overpower the Iron Claw. I knew that Iron Claw was gonna backfire, man. I have yet to see any warrior send a statement like Vlad. We use nuclear warfare today as a deterrent. Vlad used impalement as the psychological atomic bomb of his day. Vlad does not stop. He does not quit, and ultimately the psychology, the weaponry, and the ferocity of that man makes him the deadliest warrior. 
protect your butthole. Strangle gang, stay strong, and I'll see you in the next one.